Hi friends, welcome to my dining room table and for our first installation of Math at Miss Buckley's Dining Room Table. I've even saved you a seat. You can sit right there and learn all of this fabulous stuff with me. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to say this sentence with confidence. I can compare numbers using place value, which we're familiar with, to determine which number is the greatest, we can use that little alligator mouth, which we'll talk about in a moment, and which number is the least, and we symbolize it using that little alligator mouth. The secret to this, to your success though, is knowing the difference between digit and value. Do you remember that from a previous lesson? A digit is simply a number. It's, we see it with our eyes, it's a symbol. It represents something. A digit is just a number, but digits have value, depending on where they fall in the place value chart. For instance, if the number one is placed here in the ones chart, in the ones column rather, that's equal to one. However, if I move that one here to the tens column instead, let me do this for you. If I move it here to the tens column instead and put a zero as a placeholder in the ones column, all of a sudden I have a completely different number. Just by moving the one, one place to the left, it has increased its value 10 times. Now, this, is, this digit is worth 10. That's one bundle of 10, so we have 10. If I continue to move it across the place value chart, every time I move to the left, it's like multiplying by 10. I've moved it one column to the left to the hundreds place. Now, using zeros as placeholders here, I now have the number 100. There's one group of hundreds here. Oh my gosh, look how value is different than digit. If I looked at just the digit, I would say, oh, I have one, when in fact, because of place value, I have 100. Man, I wish that was money. Okay, are you ready to learn a new skill? Do you have a piece of paper and a pen or a marker or any writing stick whatsoever? If you don't, pause the video and grab it now. You'll need it to practice this with me. For those of you who are prepared, and those of you who are just coming back, welcome! Let's, let's pick a couple of numbers now. I'm going to erase our little I can statement here. We'll refer back to it later. But let's look at a couple of different numbers. The way that I'm going to do it, to start off kind of easy, I won't always have a place value chart in front of me, but I like to look at numbers first if I'm really going to analyze them. I like to look that, at them in the place value chart. So if I were to say to you, hey friend, um, I'm having this uh, problem figuring out which is greater or the greatest between nine and 19. And you'd say, are you joking me? That's so easy. Of course I know that nine, nine ones and 19, here, let me hold it up for you so you can see. Here, I have nine ones and zero tens. If we look here, I still have those nine ones, but I have one group of 10. Obviously, 19 is greater than nine. The way that I write this, I write my, I can choose any number to go first. And then I have the other number here, but this, here comes the trick. Now I have to figure out which symbol I need to write to show that 19 is greater than nine. Hey guys, guess what? This is how I have remembered it for my whole life. I know it's kind of babyish, but I still use this pro tip. I always say the alligator mouth eats the biggest number. I can just imagine little teeth in there. Arr, arr. The alligator eats the greatest number. 
So what if I wrote it like this? What if I wrote the number nine first, and then 19 over here? Remember, the alligator always eats the greatest number. I'm going to point the opening towards the largest number, let that alligator get, get its fill. But now I read this number differently, this sentence. Look at this, the top one, I would say 19 is greater than nine. But now my symbol's pointing the other way. This means less than. Nine is less than 19. And then of course we have our friend, the equals sign. If I kept with that number nine, nine equals to nine. That's like, duh, obviously. Okay, now you're like, uh, Miss Buckley, I just wanna remind you that I'm not a baby and I know that nine is greater than, I mean, 19 is greater than 19. So uh, can we do some like big kid math? All right, fine. I just wanted to remind you that you already know how to do this. But now we're gonna ramp things up, meaning let's look at some larger numbers. That's when things start to get a little tricky. Okay, grab your pen, grab your paper. I want you to write down the number 3,091. I'm going to write it off screen here, and I want to see if our numbers look the same. 3,091. Hmm. Did you write something that looks like this? 3,000, are there any hundreds? I don't know, I need to think about that. 91. If I put it in my place value chart, this is going to help me to determine the value of each digit. I want you to write, can you draw some columns right now, kind of like I have? And I want you to see if yours looks like this. It surely should, that's pretty easy stuff. I want us to talk really quickly about the value of each one of these digits. But we can just start all the way over here. Let's read it across like we read uh, words on a page. I can see here that I have the digit three in the thousands column, but it's not just three. It's three groups of thousands. I have like three $1,000 bills. I wish. So the value of this digit is not three, but 3,000. Ah, uh, do I have any hundreds? I have lots of 100s within this number, but I don't have any here in the hundreds column. So I'm going to use a zero as a placeholder. I have the digit nine here, but it's not worth just nine. No, it's worth nine groups of 10. Nine times 10 is 90. So the value of this digit is 90. And then here's just one little one hanging out over here all by himself. The way we read this number again is 3,091. Do you notice my comma here? The way I know where to put my comma is I start here on the very far end, the left side of my number, and I count one, two, three digits, and then place my comma. And every time I go one, two, three, I put another comma. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, but hey, Miss Buckley, you said something about comparing numbers. Really, right now, we've only just talked about like regular numbers. Uh, we already know how to do this. Okay, okay, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. We are going to now compare 3,091 and 23,091. Can you write that number? Do you know how to write that number? 23,091. Does it look like that? Sweet. Well, then if you did it like that, then you've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on. I'm going to put it in my place value chart now because I really want to look and analyze this closely. Hmm, now I've got two numbers and I can compare. I'm looking for similarities. I'm trying to find similarities and differences. All right, I'm going to actually read the number 
like we do across the page like words. I'm reading here and I see that I have not zero in the hundred thousands column. Okay, ten thousands column. Whoa, I've got two of them here. The value of this digit is not two, is it? It's not even 2,000. Remember, this is the tens thousands place. That means I have two groups of 10,000. This is worth 20,000. This digit is worth what? Same thing as before. Not three, but 3,000. We have a placeholder in our hundred spot. We have nine groups of 10, again, for the value of 90, and a single one. You know what? When comparing numbers, I could have stopped right here. This number has 20,000 more. It's worth 20,000 more, or the value is, than this number. Holy moly. So I automatically know if this is a five-digit number, it will automatically be greater than this four-digit number. The way that I would write this sentence is, I'm going to do this one. You can try to, why don't you try it? Write the number 3,091, okay? And then I want you to leave a little space here. And then I want you to write 23,091. And in that little space, I want you to figure out which symbol should we use, which alligator mouth should we use to show the relationship between these two numbers. Which one is greater, which one is less. All right, I'm going to do it off screen. Let's see if you can guess it before I can get it written. I'm changing, let's see, ultimate challenge. You better beat your teacher. All right, I've got my green marker. I remember if I'm looking at place value, that one is, okay, that has 20,000 more than the other one. So that must be greatest. My symbol, oh, I remember the alligator always eats the greatest number. It's a greedy little animal and it gobbles up that big number. So I would read this sentence as 3,091 is less than 23,000. 91. Sweet. Let's try one more before I cut you loose. Are you ready for like a super hard one? Okay. I'm going to erase my board. Let me think of a really, two really, okay, yeah, I know this one. Okay, I'm going to trick you. I want you to write the number 1,762. 1,762. Does it look like this? Sweet. Now, beside it, I want you to write the number. Hmm. Make yourself a little line in between so we have room to compare, okay? So now it should look like this. Yeah? Cool. Now I want you to write the number 1,672. 1,672. Now I've set up an expression, a statement that I'd like to make about these numbers. 1,762 is blank than 1,672. My suggestion to you when analyzing numbers that are this closely related Try thinking about putting them into row, I mean rows and columns, yes, into the place value chart. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with this number and I'm going to place it in my chart. You do the same. Okay, let's see. I know that that goes there. That goes there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I've got it. Do you have that first number in your hundreds chart? Not in your hundreds chart, goodness gracious. In your place value chart, cool. Looks like that, rockin'. Now, I want you to place the second number in the place value chart, 1,672. Let's take a look at these two numbers. They look really similar to me. They have all the same digits in them, but the value of some of those digits are different. 
Let's analyze these. If we're comparing this number, they both have one group of a thousand. Hmm, they're the same there. I can go here to the hundreds column. Whoa, this one has, a, uh, has seven groups of a hundred. This number has six groups of 100. Bing, 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 bing. One of those numbers is greater than the other. Which one is it? Go ahead and circle the number on your page. Which number is the greatest? I'm doing it right now, and I'm gonna beat you. Yes, I am. All right, this circled number is the greater of the two. Seven hundreds is greater than six hundreds. All right, are you ready to complete our expression with the alligator mouth? Which way, which direction will the alligator mouth go? Complete your number sentence now. I'm gonna beat you, cause I know the answer. No, 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 no. Oh, what, you, you already beat me? Oh, come on now. Are you sure? Did you get, bam, this? Oh, I sure hope you did. The way that I would read this expression is 1,762 is greater than the number 1,672. Man, you're on your way to success. It doesn't matter how big the numbers get. You can take it all the way over into the hundred thousands place. In fact, we're going all the way to the millions place soon. All you have to do is plug it into this place value chart and then compare numbers by columns. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, guys, you're going to practice on your own now. You think you're ready? Yeah, I think you are too. Good luck, and I can't wait to see your amazing math work. Don't forget, show your thinking, because teachers love to say that. Later, dudes.